Oh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, great to be here. I've got um, a headline from the BBC this morning. I always go through, you know, on my phone, look at the headlines. So I want to get it right. It says, uh, UKIP's, UKIP proved right as polls show huge public concern over uncontrolled mass migration. So you saw it? Yes, no, I'm sorry, it didn't exist. It's a bit of fake news. <laughs> it's a bit of fake news, and we're hearing an awful lot about fake news at the moment, and things called post-factual world and all the rest of it. Don't you find that it's very, very odd that at the very time, all the liberal orthodoxies of the media are being seriously questioned since Brexit, that we're suddenly starting to hear about fake news and post-factual arguments. <laughs> the reason, of course, that they are doing this uh, is because they realize they are losing their grip. And that is hugely down to us and what we did last year with the referendum, because I don't need to tell you, the fact is, is if you wanted to come out of the EU 10 years ago, or if you even questioned the possibility there might be drawbacks to mass migration, or if you thought there might be drawbacks even to the doctrine of multiculturalism, you were considered a crazy person. You were considered absolutely on the fringe. Well, the fact is, those are now the true center of British politics, and that is down to us, and that is why they are fighting back, and that is why they are being so vicious, and we must not let them win. Uh, one thing they do ask, I've been doing a lot of media since Paul very kindly made me his deputy, I've been doing a lot of media, one thing they do ask a lot is, uh, what is UKIP for? What is UKIP for? What is UKIP for? Well, I think that today, I think more than anything, we've seen absolutely what we are for. And I think that one of the best lines to come out of this was Paul's this morning, when he said that we are going to be the backbone of Brexit. That is a brilliant way of putting it, and of course that is our, one of our premier functions at the moment. Um, but I would say that hugely important that that is, uh, we do have other functions. And I think they're not immediately uh, related to Brexit. And we are the only party that can look at these issues and take them on. Because we are the only party which actually does think the unthinkable. We are best when we are at our most radical. And let's be honest about it, the other parties are just simple cowards, straightforwardly. Uh, the first one is, without question, uh, we hear the word existential a lot these days, at least I do, and uh, one of the biggest existential threats of our time and in Europe and in the world is radical Islamism. And I think there is absolutely no question that we as a party, going forward in the next years, must look at this issue, we must talk about this issue, and we must not pussyfoot, pussyfoot around it. <laughs> Quite often when I'm asked uh, the questions about this, uh, uh, about radical, Islam, and uh, you know, quite often the interviewer, usually on the BBC, uh, will say something like, yes, but uh, you're talking about people you know, coming into the country who want to do, it, uh, do it damage and harm. Don't you realize that, in fact, uh, the majority of the attacks that we've had, such as 7-7 and Lee Rigby, don't you realize that they are homegrown? And, of course, that is true. There are two. There is an internal and an external threat. But I would say to you, if there is an internal threat, as we know there is, why would you add to it by the possibility of people coming into Britain who want to do us harm? It's insane. Why would you do it? No country that wants to survive would behave in that way. And we realize this because it is pure and utter common sense. Of course, the reason, one of the reasons I would say why we have that internal threat is because of the 
terrible failure of the doctrine of multiculturalism. We are a multi-ethnic society, and we want more than anything, and part of my brief as culture spokesman is to promote the idea of an overarching set of British values and British identity, which is shared by everybody. But that wasn't multiculturalism. Multiculturalism was more or less saying, keep to your own, even keep your own language. Don't try to integrate in any way with us, because after all, we're pretty terrible. That was the message all the time that was got from the liberal elites and the people who set the tone of our culture. So that is one of the big mistakes which has led to separate communities and to radicalization. And I would say, and these are incredibly serious, essential points about our society, that our very values now are the things that we as a party actually have to, challenge, uh, to uphold and to champion because nobody else will do it. <laughs> At the very, very basis of our society and our democracy is free speech. Now, I don't know what you feel, but I think now there is a culture where people seriously do not know what they can and cannot say. This is appalling that we have got to the situation in the year 2017, and free speech itself is apparently under threat. What I would say to you is that it is incredibly important that we always maintain our ability and our right to criticize and mock if we want to. There should be absolutely no one who is off limits there. There can be no, there can be no unofficial blasphemy law in Britain. I don't want to be in a country where a young Olympic sportsman messing about on YouTube or whatever is then put to a trial by media, as happened quite recently, and his actual career threatened for just mucking about as a young person and mocking a religion. That is not the kind of country that is truly free, and we must resist it at every opportunity. <laughs> then there comes supremacy of the law. We've heard a lot about supremacy of our legal system uh, today, and quite rightly. But that means that we have to uphold the integrity of British law, British law alone. We cannot have competing legal systems in this country. And that is why we have to oppose, at every opportunity, the growth of Sharia law. Uh, Margot uh, just recently highlighted very eloquently some of the things that women face uh, growing you know, up in Britain now and, and how, in fact, retrogressive it is uh, for many of them. We must never accept practices that are actually alien to our values and indeed our laws. So, for example, to take her example of female genital mutilation, there are now tens of thousands of cases of this. This has actually been illegal since about 1987. There has been one prosecution. It's an utter shame. It's more than a shame. And it's completely, sir, you're absolutely right. It's nothing more than child abuse. And what I would say is that, that the reason this has been tolerated is misplaced cultural sensitivity like we saw in Rotherham. Oh, that went past really quickly. Um, I would say also this. Uh, the foundation of how we communicate and how we relate to each other as people is how we see each other, how we look at each other. So I would say, is it not right that you sh should show your face in a public place? Yeah. <laughs> Finally, don't clap. <laughs> I've got to get on. 
And the most important thing, we have a project, ladies and gentlemen, we have a project, UKIP, and that is we have got to reverse 50 or 60 years of denigration of Britain and Britishness, which has happened through our educational system. I want to see flags and pictures of the Queen in our schools. Why not? These people, just, I'll be ending now, but these people who I mentioned at the very beginning, who know that they're losing their grip, th these are the people who uphold this kind of systematic deconstruction of us as a country. It's going to stop, and we are going to do it. This is our function. Thank you.